Hey, what's up guys? So this is going to be opening 042. The 42nd opening that I'd like to share with you is the Song Yan variation opening. So this is one of those openings that is not officially named after a uh, player, but I'm just going to go ahead and name it uh, under the Chinese player Song Yan. Um, so a quick background about Song Yan is that he's one of the top few ranked uh, Chinese players. And of course, his key achievements uh, is actually winning the Othello World Cup 2014, which is, was uh, actually a special invitational event for the top uh, 40 players uh, in the world. And of course, uh, that event was held in Singapore, so I had the opportunity to actually see him live in action while I was hosting the event. So um, I think he actually played a very uh, strong uh, quarterfinals throughout to the finals, beating I think three top Japanese players en route to actually taking the title. So um, definitely he's uh, well known for his uh, strength and his versatility in terms of uh, the openings he prepared for. Most of his openings do actually surprise the Japanese. I think uh, in one of the earlier opening videos in the bent Ganglion opening, I actually uh, talked about one of his variations during the 2014 WOC, which was the year end world championship uh, after he won the Othello World Cup. Uh, he actually did come up with a variation that surprised uh, you know, some of the Japanese representatives. And of course, you must know that it's definitely not easy to surprise the Japanese players given that uh, they have so much extensive knowledge uh, of in the game. So let's go ahead and jump into this sequence. Uh, I named it after Song Yen vari uh, for this uh, variation is because I think he plays it really well and uh, I think it's also unnamed. So if I were to really nominate somebody for this uh, opening, I would actually go ahead to nominate him. So let's take a look at that sequence, which is uh, basically that extension of the um, Gang Lion opening actually. Uh, and then C6 and over here for white, instead of playing uh, the usual C5 or probably the popular B6, you actually go to C3. C3 being a diagonal cut feeds a very easy and intuitive move for black at first. So D3 is intuitive for black because it centralizes, but then because of this uh, feed move, you actually sort of like feed black and then you go for that straight cut or the penetration move in between these three discs. So this is quite a special opening in a sense that you sort of force black into uh, limited options. Uh, these four options even though seem playable, but if you just sort of switch off the software, you, you sort of feel that uh, black is forced to take uh, pretty ugly looking moves and pretty disperse, mainly because white has control of this uh, d4 disc, which is uh, somewhat penetrating between uh, the three black discs on the board, and also because there's no way black can actually rejoin his discs, at least not for the moment, immediately. So uh, white basically controls this sort of one disc uh, diagonal over here between E3 and C5. So that's uh, probably a variation that would potentially uh, you know, put your opponent off guard a little bit. So that essentially is the Song Yan variation. Uh, I'll just name it after him. Uh, so in general, I think you probably have fairly counterintuitive moves for black. Um, so let's say if you were to just go for this program recommended best move for uh, E2, it's somewhat dispersive actually. So of course the, the counterintuitive-ness uh, of this moves actually apply to black and also white. So of course on the flip side of trying to make it difficult for black to play, it's also difficult for you to play so you definitely need to prepare uh, for many lines but you definitely have many options. So if black goes to E2, uh, one potential response you might consider is to actually regroup to C5 which is quite natural to just want to jump in and regroup there and sort of like just leave the D2 disc out instead of actually playing F4 perhaps uh, that regroups to the right and sort of gives up these two discs separately. So I think this is fairly counterintuitive for white perhaps. Um, as a book move as opposed to maybe c5. So of course if you know the line and you play it uh, and black follows with uh, b3 which is 
also um, this is probably fairly intuitive I guess uh, probably black could also consider e6 or maybe even f3 um, so let's say if black were to play to b3 uh, then this move becomes fairly intuitive for white to actually just cut back into the center while maintaining this line control in the vertical end and also the diagonal end and also re-establishing that c3 white disc to perhaps just potentially regroup back to e3 in the future so over here it then becomes somewhat counterintuitive for black to just sort of like wrap around the shape but also because perhaps black does not have much options so it becomes very limited options for black uh, black could potentially just go to the edge or probably just try to forcefully intersect but if he does intersect then he opens up pockets of spaces that are easy for white to actually regroup so if black wraps around this this is almost a very simple uh, regrouping move for white perhaps so i think uh, there are quite a few options for black to respond uh, once you play out this variation so for white you will definitely need to have a strong knowledge in terms of the opening and how you want to respond to each of these variations so uh, you will definitely need to know how to respond to it and uh, therefore uh, I would actually recommend uh, advanced players and above to play this opening. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you like this uh, opening.